In this video, we're going to look at what happens when we multiply and divide by powers of 10. So here we've got a question, 256 multiplied times 10. So we've got 256, so we've got 2 in the hundreds column, we've got 5 in the tens column, and we've got 6 in the ones column. And we're going to multiply it by 10 for the first question. So when we multiply by 10, all of the digits move up a column. So the hundreds move into the thousands. The tens move into the hundreds and the ones move into the tens. And we've now got a gap. So we've now got a gap in the ones column. There's nothing in the ones column. So we have to fill it with a zero. So we've got 256, we've multiplied it by 10. So that's two, five, six, zero now. We've now got two thousands, five hundreds, six tens or 60, and no ones. All of the other columns have got nothing in them, but we don't need to write anything there because a number makes sense written like this. So we've got 2,560. Now we're going to look at 256 multiplied by 100. So if we go back to the start, so we'll start with 256. So 2 in the hundreds column, 5 in the tens column, and 6 ones. When we multiply by 100, that's the same as multiplying by 10 twice. So multiplying by 100 is the same as multiplying by 10, and then multiplying by 10 again. So every time we, move, we multiply by 10, we move the numbers up to the next column. So if we multiply by 10 two times, we're going to move the numbers up two, up two columns. So up two spaces. So our hundreds are going to move into the ten thousands. Our tens are going to move into the thousands. And our ones are going to move into the hundreds. Because we multiplied by ten two times, which means we move the digits up two times, we move them up twice. So we've got two in the ten thousands column now, five in the thousands column, and six in the hundreds column. And if we don't add the zeros in, it looks like we've got 256. So we're going to have to add a zero into the tens column and a zero into the ones column to make our number make sense. So to make it 25,000 now and 600. So that's 25,000 and 600. Okay, and let's look at what happens when we multiply 256 by 1,000 now. So 1,000 is the same as 10 times 10 times 10. So instead of multiplying by 1,000, we can think of it as multiplying by 10 three times. And every time we multiply by 10, we move the digits up to the next column. So we're going to move the digits up once, twice, three times now. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And there's nothing in the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. But so we know that we're talking about hundred thousands, ten thousands, and thousands. We need to fill up the columns all the way up to the decimal point with zeros. So our answer is going to be two hundred thousands, five ten thousands, and six thousands. So that's two hundred and fifty-six.
thousand. Okay, so we've got the same question as last time, but we're going to be looking at decimals this time. So we're going to start with 2.56. So we've got 2 in the 1s. We've got 5 tenths and 6 hundredths. So 2.56. And we're going to do 2.56 times 10. So every time we multiply by 10, we move the digits up to the next column. The 1s move into the 10s. The tenths move into the 1s. And the hundredths move into the tenths. So that's 25.6. All the rest of the columns have got zeros in. But we don't need to write them to make our number make sense. So we can just write 25.6. Okay, let me go back to the start. So we've got 2.56. And this time we're going to multiply by 100. And 100 is the same as 10 times 10. So we're going to multiply by 10 two times. And every time we multiply, multiply by 10, we move the digits up to the next column. So we're going to move the digits up two times because we've got two tens. We're multiplying by two by ten twice. So one, two, one, two, one, two. So now we've got two hundreds, five tens and six ones, which is two hundred and fifty six. I don't need to add any extra zeros because the number makes sense as it is. And again, we'll go back to the start. So we'll start with 2.56. And we're going to multiply by 1,000 this time. And 1,000 is 10 times 10 times 10. So we're going to multiply by 10 three times. Every time we multiply by 10, we move the digits up to the next column. So we're going to be moving the digits up three times. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we're going to get two thousands, five hundreds, and six tens. The ones is empty, and that means it's got a zero in it. So we need to have something in the ones for the number to make sense. Otherwise it'll look like 256. So we've got 2,560. Okay, now we're gonna look at dividing by powers of 10. So dividing is the opposite of multiplying. So when we multiply by 10, we move all the digits up to the next column. This time, we're going to be moving the digits back to the previous column. So, we're going to start with 680. So, we're going to start with 600, 6 in the hundreds, 8 in the tens, and a 0 in the ones. So, 680, and we're going to divide by 10. So when we divide by 10, we move everything back to the previous column. So the 1s move down to the temps, the 10s move down to the 1s, and the 100s move down to the 10s. So we've got 68.0, 68.0, and we don't need to write the 0. So 68.0 is the same as... 68. So we can just write 68. 68 point nothing is the same as 68. Okay, the second one. If we go back to the start again. So we'll start with 680. And this time we're going to divide by 100. Dividing by 100 
is the same as dividing by 10 two times. So instead of dividing by 100, we can think of it as divide by 10 and divide by 10 again. Every time we divide by 10, we move everything back down to the smaller column. So we're going to move everything down, all the digits down, two times to divide them by 10 twice. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So that's 6.80. And again, we don't need the 0. 6.8 is the same as 6.80. So we can just write 6.8 this time. And we've got 680 divided by 1,000 as well. And dividing by 1,000 is the same as dividing by 10 three times. So we've already divided by 10 twice. Well, let's do the whole thing. So we started with 680. And we're going to divide by 10 three times. To divide by a thousand. So we're going to move all the digits down three times. So I've got 0 0.680. So we don't need the zero on the end because 0.68 is the same as 0 0.680, but we do write 0 0.68. So we, we leave a zero in the ones to tell us it's 0 0.68. So we've got 0 0.68 this time. Okay, here's another question. So this time we've got 98 to start with, 9 in the tens, 8 in the ones, and we're going to divide by 10. When we divide by 10, we move everything back to the previous column. So, the 1s move into the tenths, and the tens move into the 1s. So our answer is 9.8. So we'll go back to the start, 98, and this time we're dividing by 100, which is the same as dividing by 10, two times. So we're going to move all of the digits back, twice. So one, two, one, two. So that's 0.98 and we write that as 0 0.98. So we've got 0 0.98. And we'll go back to the start again, so 98. And for the last question, we're dividing by a thousand which is the same as dividing by 10, three times. So we're going to move all the digits back three times. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's, well, we've got blanks in between the decimal point and our number, which we're not allowed. So we need to add a zero there. And we've got nothing in front of the decimal point which we're not allowed, so we need to add a zero there. So that gives us 0 0.098.